Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Uh, in one of my last videos, I showed you how to write your own affinity method for protein A chromatography specifically from scratch, right? In this method, you know, the plan was to have four cell culture samples, each with a different antibody in them that we're interested in keeping separate, um, run over a map select shore column. That's a tricorn 10 100. Uh, we had three different buffers we were going to use. We were going to be using the sample pump to load them all. Um, so some of the sample lines were going to be in the running buffer, the neutral-ish pH 7.5 buffer, right? We had some other specifications, uh, at least for the method. Well, today I want to show you how to actually set up this method. Um, I'm going to try doing it a uh, slightly different way. Normally I like show you how to, when I've done this before, I've shown you how to do it like with the the actual system um, but I thought it might help to use like kind of this uh, more figurative display okay so the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to check that the pumps and all the inlet lines are mostly full of liquid if any of the lines are completely dry you need to prime them with a syringe um, then you're going to put all of the lines you're using into water and prime them uh, with the uh, pump wash instruction. Uh, this is so this is going to be A1, A2, B1, the sample pump buffer line, then S1 through 4. It helps a lot to check the waste of the system as it's priming. So that way you can be sure that, you know, at least for check it once for each pump that you're running. So when you first start running A1, make sure that um, not only is the inlet line you know, not totally full of air, but that the, you know, what what you're getting out of the back of the system is actually running water, right? Okay. After you do the buffer, I mean, sorry, after you do the water wash, right, then you're going to put everything into its respective buffers. So uh, I was saying this is PBS right here, the neutral-ish running buffer, right? Um, so you're going to have a lot of lines in there because the you know, A1 is going to be in that one, but also the sample pump buffer line and then S1 through 4. Okay, but then you're going to have one line in the acid elution buffer and then one in the guanidine hydrochloride. And then when you do that, you're going to use the pump wash instruction um, to prime all of the buffers again, right? So we've gone for each line, we've done water for each one and then buffer for each one. All right, we're you know, leaving our antibody samples aside for a little while here too. Okay, so there are a lot of ways we can do this. We could have attached the column before we actually started uh, priming all the buffers and everything. It really depends on your personal preference, the kinds of buffers you're using, the column you're using. Maybe that's a bad idea. Maybe that's a good idea to uh, put all your buffers and get your system running with buffers first. So in this case, I am uh, attaching the column after I have all the buffers um, primed. Okay. So in order to attach the column, we are going to set the system up with a flow of one mil a minute, and that's done right here. And then the next thing we're going to do is uh, in Unicorn, we're going to set the column position to position one, and then we're also going to set it for upflow right here, um, so that the system will start running up. Uh, then what we're going to do, um, so now that it's running, we're going to get drips uh, coming down off the side because there's not going to be any um, inlet tubing. Sorry, there's not going to be any tubing for the column at this point, right? Okay, now we're going to attach a bit of tubing from the uh, column valve to, like, we're going to, uh, yeah, just attach that there. And so now the drips are going to be coming up the bottom of the tube. And then we're going to remove the bottom stopper on the column. Still have, uh, you know, buffer dripping out of the, the tube there. Um, and then we're going to attach the bottom tube uh, to the, the actual column, but we're not going to tighten it. What that's going to do is it's still, it's going to allow flow to go through the tube, but it's still going to be dripping at the bottom. So the next step is the most important part. So we're going to loosen the top adapter right here. But, and we're gonna tighten the bottom adapter more or less at the same time. We might do the bottom really quick, then the top really quick right after that. But just a, 
you know, quick half quarter turn right here, then a quick half turn quarter turn right here. Um, there will hardly be any pressure build up on the column because we're only running at one mil a minute. And what that'll do is it'll cause drips to come out of the top of the column. Um, in my opinion, uh, doing this sort of thing, if you're messy like this, dripping water everywhere or buffer everywhere, that's, that's a good sign. Um, you know, you want to do that so we prevent getting air on the column. Once we're done with that, we're going to remove the stopper and attach the top tube. Okay. Uh, then, of course, there's one more step, um, which is we're going to turn the column valve um, back to downflow right here, downflow inside Unicorn, right? And that'll cause the flow to go in the proper direction. And we're going to let it run that way for about a CV, and then we're going to turn off the flow. Okay. So the next important thing, <laughs> I still have five here, so it, it really should be um, 14. So typo on my part. So step 14 is that you filter your samples. Protein A is expensive. So here's our samples before, and we can see the little cartoon character in the back now um, after we filtered them, right? Seriously, folks, though, I just have a example of a filtration here. Just a, don't use a coffee filter. <laughs> Do like 0.2 micron filter or better, something like that. Okay, so next we're kind of coming to the end here. So we're gonna place the sample lines in each of the cell harvests now that we have them filtered, right? Um, we're gonna turn on the sample flow. I like doing something like three mils a minute. If you do one mil a minute, you can do that, but it's gonna just take forever. Um, you wanna do something close to the, uh, the sample flow rate. Okay, so then when we do that, um, wait, going back here, just real fast, we're going to not only just place the sample lines in the cell harvest, we're going to make sure they're going all the way to the bottom. So, you know, this graphic's kind of hard to get things like perfectly lined up, um, you know, but we want to make sure all those tubes are all the way in the bottom. Then we're going to turn on the sample flow for three mils a minute. And once we've done that, we're going to turn the sample valve to um, position one of the sample pump. Um, and then we're going to wait until um, the bubble like if there's any air bubble or just the sample is going to go past the sample valve, right? And we're going to do the same thing for sample two, same three thing for sample three, and then sample four. So, you know, up, 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 and up. So what I like to do when I'm putting these things in here is I like to, you know, um, kind of flick it a little bit, the tube, a little bit with my finger. Um, just before I put it into the sample pump. So I get a tiny little air bubble right there. And that gives me a good indication of when the, the solution is all the way into the sample valve. Um, and once it's in there, it's pretty much good to go. Um, you know, you're probably gonna wash this with, out with buffer a little bit at the end. Um, and all the lines are gonna be full of your sample um, and almost none of the sample is gonna go past the valve doing that. Okay, and finally, the last thing we're gonna do is pack the fraction collector with 15 mil tubes. Um, I know for this run, for example, that I only need one 15 mil tube for each of these samples because this method is usually fairly reliable. Um, and I may do, uh, so I would really just put four tubes in there, but you know, hey, we could put five in there just to be safe in case one of them skips for some reason or collects a little extra. Maybe you do 10, that's fine. Fill the whole fraction collector. It's, you know, tubes are kind of cheap. All right, thank you very much. I hope you found this helpful and um, leave a comment below if you have any suggestions. Hi everyone. I did want to show you guys a result file from the method that we wrote together. Uh, this is an affinity method where we loaded a cell harvest sample. Um, you can see we loaded about 500 mils on here exactly, which looked really good. Um, this is where loading ended, and then after that, the UV went down a bit. And then this is the fraction that we collected, right? So we'll just zoom in on that real fast. We can see it right here. This one has a pretty distinct shoulder. Sometimes that's because there's a different species here. Other times that's because of the way this curve is shaped. Um, so it's hard to know that. And then I did type in the extinction coefficient already is 1.4, which means we ended up with a concentration of, it was one just a little while ago. It's probably because the baseline. Um, let me 
zoom out. So the baseline here from the, the program's trying to draw a baseline for the uh, sample loading. So I'll just move over here. You'll notice how there's a little tiny bit at the bottom of the base of the illusion peak. There we go, that cleared it up. Okay, so yeah, it was a concentration of one mg per mil earlier. And that means we ended up with about 22 milligrams. I found this method fairly reliable um, with the way we wrote it, so I'm pretty pleased. I hope you are able to write the same method and it works well for you too. Thank you very much. Uh, have a nice day.